Hello everyone, this is Peter from Drone Vibes. After me and Eric talked about my new addiction to drone panels on our Drone Vibes podcast and sharing some of them on a few drone groups, I decided to put together this quick tutorial video that covers the basics of this technique and a few things I learned about it. The panoramic photography technique is used to create images with horizontally elongated fields of view. They are combined from multiple overlapping images that are stitched together using specialized software such as Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop, AutoPano or PTGUI. The resulting image is a wide strip with aspect ratio from 2 to 1 to 10 to 1 and beyond covering fields of view up to 360 degrees. This technique offers a great way to create wide shots impossible to create even with some of the widest lens. It is also beneficial when used with fixed lens cameras, which makes it a great technique to experiment with in drone photography. This technique allows us to create images that can be used for very large prints without a significant loss in quality. A typical 8 picture wide and 3 picture tall panorama with pictures overlapping by one third can yield an image roughly 11,000 by 4,500 pixels, which could be used to create 115 by 47 inch large prints at 96 dpi. Yes, that's 10 by 4 feet. If you don't really need something this large, you can easily get a nice print third of that size at excellent 300 dpi resolution. But enough with pixels and dots, let's move on to the fun part. How to shoot panoramic images with your drone? Just like in regular photography, camera settings and composition are very important when shooting your panels. With the camera left in auto, you may end up in, with brighter parts of the photograph in warmer amp or amber tones, while the shady parts may get a bit of a cooler or blue tone. The key to keeping the white balance and tone consistent between all panorama parts is setting your camera manually. The exposure will also change between the photos. It is important to properly expose each tile for the best results. When it comes to composition, same rules apply to panoramas as to the regular photographs, rules of thirds and so on. The only big difference is that you don't really get to see the final product composition until it's stitched together later. Plan your panel by looking around and exploring your scene first. This will get easier with practice as it becomes easier for you to imagine what the result will look like after you do a few. It also helps to make more pictures than needed, even cover the entire 360 degrees and then experiment with composition by stitching your panorama from only some of the pictures. High contrast scenes, for example sunrise and sunset, may benefit from using the HDR technique. We cover this technique in one of our other video tutorials. Perhaps my favorite kind are long exposure night panels combined from long exposure photographs usually at one and a half to four second shutter speed. In this case it's really important to take multiple shots of each image. Uh, take five to ten so you can pick the sharpest ones to create your panel from. Even one blurred tile in a 15 picture panorama may ruin the entire panel so you'll need a lot of patience to create these. The amount of overlap may differ with conditions and the proximity to objects. I find that moving between the photos by one third works the best. To help with the reference points, I use a grid overlay for my live preview, which is available on most cameras and drone apps. The grid uses two horizontal and two vertical lines that split the screen into thirds, making it easy to pick reference points accurately. If I'm moving vertically, top to the bottom, I simply look for an object in the image on the bottom one of the two horizontal grid lines, take my picture and then tilt the camera down until this object lines up with the top line before taking the next shot. Shoot the vertical images first before moving in between the horizontal parts. So for 2x5 tile panorama, take the first two shots from top to bottom, then you go to the right by one third, take your next two top to bottom, move to the right again and continue in this pattern until your panel is done. I prefer to use Adobe Lightroom for most of my panels and Auto Panel for the ones that Lightroom has difficulty stitching. When editing pictures for your panoramas, correct any lens distortion first and also remove any lens vignetting, which are the darker areas along the edges and in the corners of your photos. Both of these are easy with Lightroom. Correcting for the lens distortion happens in the lens correction part of the develop menu. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit profile and check off enable profile corrections. I already have the DJI profile set for the Inspire and Phantom here. To correct the lens vignetting, I'm gonna hit manual in the same section and move the lens vignetting slider up until the vignettes in the corners pretty much disappear. Removing the lens distortion will result in cleaner stitches and help prevent any undesired steps in horizon. Correcting the lens vignetting will mitigate dark vertical smudges across your sky, leaving it more consistent, especially important whenever there are no clouds in your panorama. Try to minimize any color grading beyond basic exposure adjustments until the panel is stitched together. Once you're done with these corrections, it's time to stitch the panorama together. In Adobe Lightroom, this is done by selecting all the images you will like combined into a panel by holding the shift down and clicking the first and last of the images, and then going to Photo, Photo Merge, Panorama. The Lightroom will then create a preview 
Most programs will give you an option to select panorama projection. Choose spherical projection for any panels with multiple vertical images. You can select cylindrical projection for the panoramas with only a single vertical shot, which are the panels when you only move horizontally between the pictures. When stitching your panorama, you may need to crop it down to remove these gaps along the outer edges of the picture. Adobe Lightroom offers a great function called boundary warp, which can be used to stretch the outer boundaries of the images to eliminate these gaps and reduce the need for cropping, just like this. Some cropping may still need to be done, as the objects near the edges of the panel will appear stretched by using the boundary warp function. When this is all done, go ahead and hit merge, and the Lightroom will then merge all the images into a single panorama. This stitched together pretty well. After the stitching is done, you can then proceed to grade and edit your panel just like any other regular photograph. And that's it! Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, you can also ask any questions in our forums at dronevibes.com, Listen to our free podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and check us out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching.